Topography and Landscapes, Interpreting the Shape of a Landscape Using a Contour Map by Andrew J. Organic. We're going to be using contour maps in order to get a three-dimensional image in our mind of what the landscape actually looks like. So a contour map allows us to imagine what a landscape looks like in three dimensions. They take a two-dimensional map and create a three-dimensional perspective using a pattern of lines called contour lines. So the top map is a contour map with a series of lines and numbers. The bottom is showing a three-dimensional representation of that area. Now this takes some practice, so be patient and be aware that you're going to have to do this more than once to get the hang of it. So like a new language, it takes some experience and practice in doing it over and over again to interpret these lines. We're going to be using our Earth Science Reference Table to locate some places in New York. The first one is going to be in Mount Marcy in upstate New York. And what we're going to do is now flip back to page two of our ESRT to figure out what landscape region Mount Marcy is in. So you'd have to think back to where that was on the previous map on page three to determine the landscape region. And you probably were able to locate it as being in the Adirondack Mountains. So we're headed to the Adirondacks, a beautiful place in upstate New York, and we're off to Mount Marcy. We're going to be using Google Earth Pictures and Google Maps in order to make connections between contour maps and actual landscapes. So here is a close-up of Mount Marcy, which is the tallest mountain in the Adirondacks, an elevation of 5,344 feet, a little over a mile high. So now we've changed from the landscape view to a contour map view using Google Maps. So you're looking at a topographic map, and here is Mount Marcy. Now in a mountain, contour lines are going to form a series of loops within loops, or concentric loops. So concentric loops mean that you have the small loop all the way in the middle, and as you go outward from the middle, they get bigger and bigger and wider. So that is a pattern for a mountain. And what's important to know that every single loop or line has a specific elevation, and these are iso lines. Iso meaning the same. So everywhere on that loop or line is the same elevation. We can see what the elevation is at a particular place by seeing what contour line is going to intersect it. So that first line we're going to look at is the 5,200 foot contour line. And I've drawn in the contour line in red so you can see that anywhere along that red line would be the 5,200 foot elevation. There is the 5,000 foot contour line. So now anywhere on that line I've drawn in is 5,000 feet. So the contour interval is going to tell us what the elevation changes by from one contour line to the next adjacent one. Adjacent meaning the one on its, directly on its side. So on this map, there's no contour interval listed. On some maps, there will be. So this one we need to figure out on our own. Every fifth contour line is darker than the others and it's called an index contour line. So we're going to be looking at two adjacent index lines. The ones we just looked at before, the 5,200 and the 5,000 foot line. So using a little math, we know that the difference between these two numbers is 200 feet. And that's just some basic subtraction, 5,200 minus 5,000. 
the next thing we can do with a traumatic explosion here is number the zones in between those lines. So if you look at the map, there are five zones between 5,000 and 5,200 feet. So we're going to take the 200 feet difference and divide by five to get 40 feet per zone, which means every contour line, the elevation goes up or down 40 feet. So on the side there, I'm going to show you the math as a review. So it's important to know that change in elevation between the two lines and the number of zones in between and do the math as indicated. 